Summary of the Yacht Written by Sarah Goodwin Chapter 1 The night enveloped the city as Hannah embarked on the solitary journey from the call center to the glittering yacht awaiting her in the coastal town of Ventimiglia. The hum of her car engine harmonized with the rhythmic beats of Dolly Parton, a comforting reminder of the days when responsibilities were lighter, and the weight of adulthood hadn't fully settled in. As she merged onto the highway, the city lights blurred into streaks of color, and Hannah's mind drifted back to the beginning of the year when she received Libby's invitation to the New Year's Eve party. Libby, with her penchant for grand gestures and extravagant celebrations, had managed to keep the tradition alive even as their lives diverged into different paths. The road stretched ahead, illuminated by the glow of her headlights, and Hannah found herself reflecting on the stark contrasts within her friend group. Libby and Ollie, with their opulent lifestyle and a yacht as the venue for the party, seemed worlds apart from Hannah's reality. Maggie, the daughter of a semi-successful model and the owner of a fashion magazine that had closed its doors in the late 90s, hovered on the edge of financial stability, hoping to secure her future through her fiancé, Leon. Then there was Harry, the sarcastic ginger nerd with a penchant for grungy fashion and a recent rise to fame in the art scene. His sculptural creations, once assembled from welded junk, now commanded significant sums of money. Meanwhile, Hannah found herself in the don't-quit-your-day-job bracket, a phrase that echoed in her mind as she navigated the night. The rhythmic thud of the tires against the road became a background symphony to her thoughts. She wondered if, in the grandeur of Libby's party, she would feel like an outsider among her friends who had seemingly ascended to different echelons of success. The familiarity of the road, the aging tape player, and the comforting voice of Dolly Parton provided a contrast to the impending glitz and glamour awaiting her at the yacht. As the miles rolled by, Hannah's mind wandered to the early days of their friendship. She, Libby, and Maggie had met at the same girls' school, but even then, the differences in their backgrounds were evident. On a scholarship, Hannah came from a modest background with a bus driver for a father and a dinner lady for a mother. The distinctions became more pronounced as they entered adulthood, but the bond formed in their school days persisted. Maggie, determined to maintain a semblance of wealth and status, despite her family's fading fortunes, leveraged her connections to enter the world of fashion. Leon, her fiancé, seemed to provide a safety net in case everything fell apart. Harry, introduced to the group through Libby, was initially a fleeting presence, a university mate who dropped out to pursue an apprenticeship. Yet, his off-campus house became a hub for their pre-club gatherings and post-club recoveries. Hannah's musings were interrupted by a text message from Libby, checking in on her progress. The warmth of friendship in Libby's breezy tone contrasted with the cold night outside. It was a reminder that, despite the differences in their lives, the bond of friendship remained intact. The party, with its extravagant preparations and last-minute adjustments on the yacht, seemed more daunting than ever. Still, Hannah reassured herself that, for one weekend, she could leave behind the call center and step back into the carefree version of herself. The road signs indicated the proximity of Ventimiglia, and anticipation mixed with apprehension in Hannah's chest. The thought of navigating the complexities of the social dynamics within the intimate guest list left her feeling exposed. Libby's desire for perfection and the pressure to conform to the expected level of sophistication added an extra layer of unease. Navigating the narrow streets of Ventimiglia, Hannah reached the marina where the yacht awaited. The sight of the sleek vessel against the backdrop of the night sky was both enchanting and intimidating. The car park was nearly empty, and the security company's van, like a silent sentinel, stood nearby. With the engine silenced, Hannah sat for a moment, contemplating the events that led her to this point. The tape player clicked off, leaving her in a temporary silence that felt heavy with anticipation. She took a deep breath gathering the resolve to step out of the car and into the world of luxury and sophistication that awaited her. The air outside carried a salty breeze from the nearby sea, and the distant sound of waves provided an undertone to the quiet marina. With each step towards the yacht, Hannah could feel the weight of her everyday life lifting. The yacht, adorned with strings of soft lights, seemed like a portal to a world where concerns about call centers and mundane responsibilities dissipated. The boarding process was seamless, with a crew member guiding her onto the deck. 
the yacht, a floating haven of opulence, was adorned with tasteful decorations. As she explored the vessel, the thought of the impending reunion with her friends brought a mix of excitement and nerves. The subdued lighting and plush surroundings created an ambience of intimacy, contrasting with the vastness of the open sea surrounding them. As the night progressed, the yacht came alive with laughter, clinking glasses, and the murmur of conversations. The guest list might have been reduced, but the warmth of camaraderie filled the space. The worries that had accompanied Hannah on the journey melted away as she found herself immersed in the joy of reconnecting with old friends. Libby, in her element as the gracious host, moved effortlessly through the crowd. The intimate setting allowed for genuine conversations, and as Hannah shared stories and laughter with her friends, the yacht became a vessel not just on the sea, but a conduit for memories and shared experiences. Harry, true to his grungy aesthetic, stood out among the polished crowd, a reminder of their university days. His presence, no longer just an extension of Libby's invite, was a testament to the enduring friendships that transcended the differences in their paths. Amidst the celebration, Hannah found herself reflecting on the significance of the yearly tradition. Libby's unwavering commitment to hosting the New Year's Eve party was more than an extravagant celebration, it was a lifeline extended to friends who, despite the changes and challenges, could come together to rediscover the essence of happiness. The clock neared midnight, and the anticipation reached its peak. As the group gathered on the deck, the night sky illuminated by bursts of fireworks, Hannah felt a profound sense of gratitude. The worries about social dynamics and wealth disparities faded in the brilliance of the moment. The countdown to the new year echoed the countdown to a time when life was simpler, and friendships were forged in the shared pursuit of joy. As the clock struck midnight, and cheers erupted around her, Hannah stood on the yacht's deck, surrounded by the people who had been a constant in her life. The past year's challenges and the uncertainties of the future seemed momentarily suspended, replaced by the embrace of friendship and the promise of a new beginning. The first moments of the new year unfolded against the backdrop of the open sea, marking not just the passage of time, but the resilience of bonds that had weathered the storms of change. In that moment, surrounded by laughter, music, and the gentle rocking of the yacht, Hannah felt a renewed sense of purpose. The night continued, with the yacht sailing into the early. Chapter 2 Hannah's journey to join Libby's New Year's Eve yacht party unfolded like a novel, complete with twists, fatigue, and unexpected encounters. As she navigated deserted roads, caught a brief nap on a ferry, and pondered the choice of the ferry over the tunnel, the narrative weaved through the mundane and the intriguing. The ferry experience turned out to be less than ideal, with a mix of passengers either in a festive mood or asleep in the soft play area. Hannah, maintaining a brisk 59 miles per hour on the motorway, couldn't help but notice that her car seemed to shake apart at higher speeds. A quick call from Harry, Libby's friend, added a touch of humor to the journey, injecting some light banter and familiarity into the late-night drive. As she approached France and the reality of being on the road for so long set in, Hannah's fatigue became palpable. Winding down the windows to stay awake, she reflected on the challenges of the journey. An hour or so into France, another call from Harry provided a momentary distraction. The playful banter continued, revealing a glimpse of the dynamics among Libby, Harry, and Ollie, the owner of the yacht. The anticipation of the upcoming celebration and the mysterious details surrounding the party occupied Hannah's thoughts. Libby's tendency to keep things vague and the memories of a lavish party at the Royal Opera House fueled her curiosity about what awaited her on this New Year's Eve. As the fatigue intensified, Hannah found herself in a French car park, contemplating the eerie experience of spending the night in her car in a foreign country. The lack of planning for this aspect of the journey became apparent and a sense of vulnerability crept in. Despite considering reaching out to Harry for reassurance, she resisted, not wanting to disturb him in the middle of the night. Eventually, she managed to get some sleep, only to be jolted awake by blinding sunshine. The car park, now alive with an American couple's argument, added a surreal touch to the morning. A makeshift morning routine in her car followed, highlighting the less-than-glamorous side of traveling alone. The drive to Italy punctuated by a stop at McDonald's and a makeshift change of clothes, brought her closer to the awaited destination. Ventimiglia, the city where Ollie's yacht was moored, greeted Hannah with chaos. 
The bustling New Year's Eve atmosphere, crowded streets, and people stepping in front of her car created a sense of frustration. The contrast between the anticipation of the extravagant party and the stressful drive heightened the tension. Parking her car marked a moment of relief as Hannah eagerly sought to escape its confines. The marina, with its circular layout and beautifully adorned boats, offered a breathtaking view. Libby, standing on the top deck of the yacht, welcomed Hannah with excitement. The boat, adorned in gold and white, emanated luxury, with a helicopter at the rear adding to the opulence. Handing over her gift to Libby, Hannah felt a moment of relaxation. The journey was over, and the promise of the night's celebration awaited. Libby, donned in a glamorous gold dress, led Hannah through the yacht's redesigned interior, showcasing its elegance and extravagance. Reaching Hannah's room, Libby playfully hinted at the possibility of bed hopping, leaving Hannah slightly perplexed. As Libby took charge, showing her around the luxurious cabin, Hannah couldn't help but marvel at the extravagance of the surroundings. The night promised to be an escape from the ordinary, a celebration of the new year in a world of wealth and luxury. With a tight smile, Hannah followed Libby's lead, ready to immerse herself in the festivities and forget the challenges of the journey. The night held the promise of cocktails, laughter, and the unveiling of Libby's carefully planned celebration. The yacht's redesigned interior exuded opulence. Libby, with the enthusiasm of a child in a candy store, showcased each corner as if it were a masterpiece. The lobby, with its white marble fireplace, snow-white couches, and circular gold tables adorned with vases of lilies, presented an image of luxury that surpassed any of Hannah's expectations. Libby shared details of the total redesign, contrasting it with the previous owner's choice of oak and studded leather. Hannah nodded along, though the subtleties of yacht interiors eluded her. The glassed-in rooms on the mid-deck and lower deck added a touch of modernity, with the glass gently pulsing with light, resembling fiber optics. As Libby led her through the cabins below, Hannah couldn't help but be impressed by the sheer size and extravagance of the sleeping quarters. Libby's cheeky comment about bed hopping lingered in the air, creating a sense of intrigue. The mention of locked doors only added to the mystery, leaving Hannah wondering about the dynamics among the guests and the potential surprises in store. The night sky sparkled above as they continued exploring the yacht. The upper deck featured a glassed-in room, the glass adorned with white and gold balloons. Spotlights slashed through the darkness, illuminating the helicopter at the rear, perfectly color-coordinated with the yacht itself. The intentional luxury struck Hannah, and a sarcastic thought about coordinating helicopters crossed her mind. Libby's excitement was contagious, and Hannah couldn't help but feel a mix of awe and amusement at the over-the-top nature of the yacht. The night held the promise of a celebration beyond her imagination. Libby, ever the gracious hostess, guided Hannah with enthusiasm, creating an atmosphere of anticipation. As they reached the deck, Libby's exuberance reached its peak. She called out to Hannah, and the night air carried her voice. Libby, standing in the white beam of spotlights, waved with the energy of someone about to unveil a grand spectacle. The path towards the glass doors was adorned with white petals and flakes of gold leaf, creating an ethereal atmosphere. The party was about to begin, and Hannah couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement mingled with the surrealism of the journey. The night held the promise of cocktails, laughter, and the unveiling of Libby's carefully planned celebration. With a tight smile and a readiness to embrace the extravagance, Hannah followed Libby towards the heart of the festivities, leaving behind the challenges of the journey and stepping into a world of luxury and opulence.